everybody, it's Storytime Friends, and we are doing art. Let's see. Hey, Miss Lisa, can you tell everybody hi? Hi, everybody. Hey, Susan. Hi. Where's Mr. Jonathan? Hi. Uh, what about Miss Michelle? Hello. Hey, can you guys tell everyone who your favorite artist is for today? Miss Lisa, who's your favorite artist? My favorite artist, his name is Piet Mondrian, and he uh, painted pictures of primary colors in squares and things like that. Oh, and that's I like, right. I like his artwork a lot. That is awesome. What about you, Mr. Jonathan? Who's your favorite artist? My favorite artist is Toulouse Lautrec, and he used to paint all of the posters for like the Moulin Rouge and all of the cabaret. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Okay, what about you, Miss Michelle? Who's your favorite artist? Um, it used to be Monet, but after I saw the Salvador Dali, his <sighs> museum with his original art, that is amazing. My goodness, the man makes two story high paintings that when you come back, the closer you are, it looks like one thing. You come back again, it looks like something else. You come back again, it looks like something else. Woo, mind blown. Love it. It's neat to be that type of visionary, too, to be able to, to look at things that different ways. Exactly. All right, Miss Susan, what about you? I guess Georgia O'Keeffe. I like her style of what she does. <laughs> Have you ever tried to paint anything like that? No. Have no. not. No. No. Uh, well, I don't really have a favorite artist because I tend to want to draw from everybody. So, but I think pop art's really cool. So, hmm. Michelle, what was his name again that we, that, that, that does all the cool Oh, Andy pop Warhol. Art? Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol. That's Warhol. right. He, he, he's the one who made those famous soup can pictures. <laughs> so they were really cool. All right, guys, stick around because we've got fun stories and a cool craft for you here shortly. So we'll see you soon. Hi, Storytime friends. Are you ready to say hello? All right. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Good morning. I'm so glad you're with us today. I'll see you in a bit for a story. Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing? Are you ready for our glasses song and a book? If you're ready and you brought your glasses with you, let's put them on. Oh, I see you out there with your glasses on. That is so cool. Did you have a book? You know what, if you don't have a book, it's okay. You can put your hands together like this and we'll just open up this book and see what's inside. Are you ready? Oh my goodness. What a mess! My book is full of paint splattered everywhere. Some kind of abstract art, I think. Good grief. What a mess. Let's just close that book. I don't think we want that new. No. So let's go ahead. We'll sing our song. Are you ready? Put your glasses on. These are my glasses. This is my book. I put on my glasses and open up the book. Now I read, 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 and I look, look, look. I put down my glasses and whoop, close up the book. And the book I have to, oh, oh my goodness, look at this mess. Paint everywhere, just like in the book when I opened it up. This book is called, I Ain't Gonna Paint No More. And it's written by Karen Beaumont and illustrated by David Catro. What a mess. One day, my mama caught me painting pictures on the floor and the ceiling and the walls and the curtains and the door and I heard my mama holler like I never did before. Ya ain't a gonna paint no more. Hmm. 
I ain't going to paint no more, no more. I ain't going to paint no more. That's what I say, but there ain't no way that I ain't going to paint no more. So, I take some red and I paint my head. Oh, no, I ain't going to paint no more. Ah, uh, what the heck? Going to paint my neck. Oh, now I ain't going to paint no more. Still, I just can't rest till I paint my chest. Oh, now I ain't going to paint no more. Guess there ain't no harm if I paint my arm. Look at all those ants. Now I ain't going to paint no more. I ain't going to paint no more, no more. I ain't going to paint no more. But I just can't stand not to paint my hand. Oh, now I ain't going to paint no more. Then I see some black. So I paint my back. Oh my, now I ain't going to paint no more. Like an Easter egg, going to paint my leg. Now I ain't going to paint no more. Still, I ain't complete till I paint my feet. Oh my gosh. Now I ain't going to paint no more. I ain't going to paint no more, no more. I ain't going to paint no more. But I'm such a nut. Going to paint my what? Uh-oh. I think we're in trouble. Y'all don't faint. Because there ain't no paint. So I ain't going to paint no more. The end. Oh, that was such a fun story. Hope you enjoyed it. Hi, Miss Michelle from Point Santa Library here, and I'm going to give you some tips on how to draw different characters. Now, the first one I'm going to draw is a duck. But when you're drawing for your, when you're starting out drawing and everything, everything that you see around you has a shape. So before I start the duck, I'm going to show you how you draw a person. Now we're going to go from the hard stuff and we're going to work our way to easy. So when you're drawing a person, of course, you always draw the head. But did you know that you can draw a little circle here for the neck, then for the body? And then you want every time you have a joint, we have our hips. Then we're going to draw the top part of a leg. Then we're going to do the knee bone and the bottom part of the leg. And all these are shapes. We have the ankle where it moves. We're going to draw feet. And when you draw a person arm, you have the shoulder where it moves. And then you have another shape. We're going to make that a little thinner here. Then we've got your elbow, the bottom part of your arm, your wrist, a hand. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. We have our shoulder. Make it a little longer here. Top part of our arm, our elbow, the bottom part of our arm, the wrist, and a hand. Now, when I first started drawing, I thought I could draw without these shapes, but when I found out that you can use the shapes and then put them together to become a person. So if we drew clothes on him, and then we're going to even out the body a little bit here. Come around here and put it together. He's got his shirt. Yeah. 
and it looks so much better when you actually use pencil guys so then we're going to finish in the shirt here by joining the rest of his arm as if he has a shirt on and then you're going to color in his shirt up here and it comes down over his waist and you're going to erase anything you don't need and we don't need that part because we now have the neck in here see now he's got a neck he's got a shirt he's got his neck now we're going to draw the legs like he has pants and we'll use a different color for them and I can erase all this inside lines because I'm going to color it in. Erase these inside lines. And you have the beginnings of a great person. And when artists start out, they start out like this. They start out making these circles. And even if they've been doing art for years, they still start with the circles. And as they go, they erase the lines in the circles as they make their details. So the reason I bring this up is because we're gonna use shapes with our duck as well. We're gonna make a duck. And to start, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't make a duck. Well, we're gonna start by making shapes because you can make shapes, anybody can make shapes. So the first one is going to be at the top. It's gonna to be our duck's head, okay? So then we're gonna put the body on, just down, right down here. Okay, now you got the duck body. Now we need the chest. So we're gonna add a circle out here. And then we need a wing. And that looks kind of like a teardrop. Okay, so you have the beginning of your duck. Now we're going to add everything, put things together a little bit. So we know that right about here is where the duck bill will be. Okay. And again, that's a couple of shapes there. And it's real rough at first. And then you're gonna put in where the eyeball will be. And then we're gonna add the neck. And then we're going to come out here we're going to add the tail and then we're going to add a couple bumps here that will be legs in a little bit so now it's looking a little bit more like a duck then we're going to erase the lines we don't need we don't need these we do need the wings still we still need the wing don't need this one anymore don't need these anymore don't need this one. Okay. Instead, we're just going to put one right here like it's his chin. We can fix our little line there. And it's looking a little bit more like a duck. We're going to fix the bill here, take that extra part out we don't need. And you always use pencil when you start out. And then we're going to come down here, we're going to add the legs. Again, it's a shape. What shape is this? Starts with a rectangle. All right, and then when we see a duck's feet, I always see a triangle in the duck's feet. Okay, and then the back part is like a little triangle too, except for it's longer and skinnier. And then we're gonna erase what we don't need. So we don't need make his little toes. There we go. And he looks a little bit more like a duck, and it was all out of shapes. It was from the shape an oval, another oval, a circle, a teardrop, okay, a mountain like shape, two rectangles, and a couple of triangles. We use tr those shapes to make a duck. Now, we're going to do a real simple one though now. Okay, we're going to do a ladybug. 
So with a ladybug, you're going to go, you're going to make a half circle because we know, oh, let me try that again. With a ladybug, you'll make a half circle. Okay. Go ahead and put the bottom in here. Half circle. And then you're going to add a full circle. What do you think that's going to be? It's going to be his head. All right. And then, of course, ladybugs have circles for their dots. Now, you don't need this. You do need an eyeball and you do need antennas. And since it's a ladybug, she is an insect, so she's going to need six legs. And we're going to do triangles without bottoms. Now, that's a little rougher, but that's a simple ladybug using shapes. All right, and we're gonna do one more that's real super simple. Again, we're gonna do the half circle. And we'll see if you guys can guess what this one is. I'm gonna put a couple circles in here. Does anybody know yet? What do you think? Then we're gonna add some squigglies. And the squigglies don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the same. All right, has anybody guessed what that one was? It's a jellyfish. And the jellyfish started with a half circle, circles for eyes and just squiggly arms. So everything in nature has a shape. All you have to do is see the shape, draw those, and then take away what you don't need anymore. And that's how you use shapes to draw. Hi everybody. I'm gonna teach you a little bit more about colors today using color theory. But first, I'll need some help with my colors. Can you tell me what color that is? Just call it out. You're right, that's red. How about that color? What color is that? I heard it. Right, that's orange. What about that color? Yes, yellow. How about that color? I can't hear you, louder. Green, you're right. What about that color? Blue. And last one, what about that color? That's right, purple. You guys did an awesome job. I can't believe how smart you are. Now I'm gonna go through the colors again and this time I'm gonna take some out. So you told me that color was what? Red, I'm going to keep red. What about that color? Orange. I'm going to put orange right over here. That color is yellow. I'm going to keep that color. What color is that? Right, green. I'm going to put that color over here. What color is that again? Blue. I'm going to keep blue. And what color is this? Purple. I'm going to put purple right over here. So I put purple green and orange over to the side and I'm keeping red, yellow, and blue. And it just so happens that I have Play-Doh of the same colors. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to do now. We are going to take these three colors that we call primary colors. Can you say primary? Primary, red, yellow, and blue. And I'm telling you, we're gonna make these colors out of just those three colors. Do you think I'm gonna be able to do it? Let's see. All right, so I'm going to take 
some yellow, and some red. Some red and some yellow. And I'm going to mix them up. And as I'm mixing, I'm going to tell you that I made this Play-Doh last night. <clears throat> and what I did was I took some cornstarch, and I took some oil, and I took some lemon juice, and I took some flour, and I put them in a pot and put in some water, and I stirred it and stirred it and stirred it over low heat, and before you know it, guess what? I had had some Play-Doh made. came into a little ball, and I had some Play-Doh. It's really soft, too, which I really like. And oh my goodness, look! I took my red, mixed it with yellow, and look what color I got. I got some orange. So when I mix my primary color red and my primary color yellow, it makes what we call a secondary color. Can you say secondary? That's right, it makes orange. So red and yellow make orange. So now I'm gonna take some yellow and I'm going to take some blue and I'm going to mix those two together. Blue and yellow. Hmm, wonder what color that's going to make. Now, after I finished mixing up my Play-Doh that was on the stove, I took it and I let it cool off. And then I took it and I put a little bit more cornstarch in, which you could do because it was a little sticky. You can see it's sticking to my fingers. But you wanted to wait till it completely cooled before you put the cornstarch in because that, um, that was when it completely, you'd be able to tell whether it was too sticky or not. And parents, let me tell you this. This is a great motor skill activity for your kids. So look, I had my yellow and my blue and I put that together and that made oh, green. So my primary color of yellow and blue made my secondary color of green. Oh, this is so much fun. So now, I don't have any yellow left, so let's try what happens if I miss, mix my red and some blue together. Oh, look at this. Now parents, we will take that recipe and we will put it in the chat box for you just in case you want to make this Play-Doh. And let me tell you, you want to make sure when you're mixing the initial colors, grown-ups, that you wear gloves because it will get messy and the food coloring that you use will stain your fingers. But right about now, because it's in the Play-Doh, I think you'll be okay with the kids. I think washing their hands will be okay. Now, and once you're done with this, once you're done mixing and you're done playing with it for the day, you can take this and put it into Ziploc baggies and it will stay. And then if after a couple days you're playing with it and you find that it is a little dried out, you can add or spritz with just a little bit of water and it will bring it back to life. This is an awesome, awesome Play-Doh recipe. <gasps> so now I took my red and my blue, which were primary colors, <gasps> and look what it made. It made a shade of purple. <gasps> it's like magic. So my primary colors were red and yellow and blue. And when I used those three colors and took two of those three colors and put them together, it made my secondary colors. So can you say primary colors? Good, say red, yellow, blue, our primary colors. Good, and they made my secondary colors, orange and green and purple. When I mixed the red and the yellow together, it made orange. When I mix the yellow and the blue together, it made, whoops, green. And when I mix the red and the blue together, it made purple. And that, my friends, is color theory. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you had so much fun. Hi, Storytime friends. I'm back, and I have a story for you today and several lovely book recommendations about art and painting. My story today is this book right here called Bear's picture. Yes, it is written by Daniel Pinkwater and illustrated by D.B. Johnson. I really like this book 
Yeah. Have any of you guys read this book? Oh, no? Oh, you should stop in the library. We've got copies of this. All right. Now, Bear wanted to draw a picture. Oh, he's got paper. I wonder what he's going to draw with. Ooh. First, he made an orange squiggle. And then, he had a look at it. I believe I want, it wants some blue, said the bear. And he painted some blue. Oh, look how pretty, how he mixed the colors. Then, the bear saw a rainbow and he put that in too. Now two fine proper gentlemen out for a walk came upon the bear. Look here, said the first fine proper gentleman. A bear painting a picture. Yes, it is a bear painting a picture. Bears can't paint pictures said the second find proper gentleman. <gasps> Why not? Why can't a bear do anything he likes? Asked the bear. I think a bear could do anything he likes. <gasps> because, said the first fine proper gentleman. Because, said the second fine proper gentleman. Bears aren't the sort of fellows who can do whatever they like. They both said. Besides, said the first fine proper gentleman, that is a silly picture. Nobody can tell what it is supposed to be, said the second fine proper gentleman. I can tell, said the bear. And he was adding some green splotches. Oh, it's starting to look really pretty. And the proper gentleman looked at it. Ah, oh, said the first fine proper gentleman. Ah, oh, said the second fine proper gentleman. Is it a butterfly? It, it looks a little like a butterfly, they said. No, said the bear, mixing just the right kind of yellow. It's not a butterfly. Mm, I see some leaves there. <gasps> oh, said the first fine proper gentleman. Oh, said the second fine proper gentleman. Is it a clown? It looks a little like a clown. Do you see a clown there? No, said the bear, putting in some purple parts. It's not a clown. They just don't want to turn, huh? Then what is it a picture of? Shouted the first and second fine proper gentleman. Hmm, it's a honey tree, said the bear. It is a cold stream in the forest. It is a hollow log filled with soft leaves for a bear to keep warm in an all winter long. It is a field of flowers. I can see all of those different things in that picture, can you? It doesn't look like any of those things to us, said the two fine proper gentlemen. It doesn't have to, said the bear. It is my picture. Oh, yeah, they can see something else. They saw a clown. The two fine proper gentlemen went away saying, bears are not the sort of fellows to paint pictures. Oh, can you guys see the picture really well? What do you see? Yeah, what do you see different things in there? I see the log, I see the tree and the honey. I see the leaves on the ground. I see flowers. But, oh, there's the stream. Mm. I see a beautiful, beautiful day there. But, 
The bear looked at his picture and he was happy. I'm happy. It's kind of got a smile there too. Yeah. All right. Isn't that a cool book? Yes, bear's picture. All right. I have some books here. For you, there's Animal Talk, and it talks about the ways, the, the different languages of, of animals, like a chicken, what it sounds like in English and Spanish, what a jaguar would sound like in English and Spanish. But it's drawn up by beautiful pictures that are um, really colorful and bright. Then drawn together, and that's about a little boy and a grandfather who connect through his grandfather's drawings because grandfather can only speak um, Chinese. Then there's little blue and little yellow. Ooh, colors everywhere and it's bilingual. It's in Spanish and in English. Blue and other colors, lots of blues, but I see pinks and reds and yellows and greens. There's the art barn where a bunch of little baby animals create beautiful art while they're at school. And then the Blue Rider, and it's a wordless book. As you go through it, you can make up your own story as you're looking at the pages. Well, I wanna thank you for joining me with my story today, Bear's Picture. And why don't, I'd like to see if you guys would draw a beautiful picture too and share it with us. And I'll see you next time. Oh bonjour, c'est moi, it is me, Jean Renoir, the special guest for today's artful story time. And today you will see I have my paintbrush, and I have my paint palette, and I have my beret. So you are going to make your own painter's palette today. And we are going to be doing so with some items that we find in our activity kit, or perhaps items you find from around the house. Small items though. So be careful because some of these parts are very small. So if you are doing this activity with someone who is also very small, be careful because we don't want any choking. So make sure to watch and do this activity with mom and dad if you are a little baby, okay? Here we go. We get out our painter's palette, right? And we get out the items that we found from around the house. And we are learning today about colors. Do you know your colors? Okay, I will test you in just one second. What color is the ladybug? <gasps> it's red, very good, very good. Okay, what color is this butterfly? <gasps> it is blue, very good, very good, okay. And what color is this dragonfly? It is green. You are so good. You are going to do this activity so good. So first we sort all of the items that we have collected into like, uh, like colors. So I have sorted all of my green items. Here I have my orange items together. Oh, this leaf and this bumblebee are both yellow. So those go together. And then purple all goes together. These are both blue. And then look, this noodle is red and it is very hard. Don't eat the noodle. So we have our painter's palette and we are going to use some glue to put our colors on as if they were splotches of paint on your painter's palette. So I am going to use a generous amount of glue. You can glue each item on individually or you can do like me and just put a lot of glue on and leave it to dry for later, right? So I've got all my green on together. All right, and let's see here. Uh, what color is this? Yellow. No, no? Oh, it is blue. You are right, you are right. Okay, okay. So we put the blue on there. We've got the blue butterfly, the blue button, and we have red. Remember, don't eat the noodle. So put the red on there. Okay, and now we have orange. Oh, yes. Perhaps you have some items around the house that you can add to make your paint splotches even bigger. And then I have some purple. These are grapes. Don't eat them. They are not real grapes. I found out the hard way. I hurt a tooth. So put the purple on. 
And then, let's see here. What do I have? I have the bumblebee. And I have the yellow leaf. And look, the yellow leaf, it looks like it is a sticker. So that will be fun. I can take off the back of the yellow leaf and I can use it like a sticker. Let's see here if it will cooperate. Aha! Yellow leaf. And get my glue. And yellow bumblebee. And voila! We are painters. Ignore that. Everything is fine. We are painters now! La 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 Starting February 2nd, instead of joining us for Storytime on YouTube, you're going to join us for Storytime on Zoom, where we can talk to you live and see you guys do the crafts and have you join us for books and songs. So go to our website to register the month prior, because on February 2nd, our Storytimes will be live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. And guess what? It's time to say goodbye. Miss Crystal, will you lead us in our goodbye song? Yeah. All right, guys. Can you wave them high? Wave them low. It's sad. It's time to go. Wave your elbows. And wave your nose. And don't forget to wave your toes. <laughs> wave your and wave your tongue and blow a kiss with fingertips. Now wave your hair or let hold. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> ears, ears, ears. Okay. What, uh, well, it says wave your lips. What did I wave your ears and wave your hair? Now you're gonna wave your derriere. Wave your chin. Wave your eyes. Now wave your hands and say goodbye. 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 <laughs>